Hey everyone, Marsh from Consequence here, gonna go over Mythic Sylvanas. Um, so, I'm gonna try to make this video as short as possible, but I know it's gonna end up being like an hour. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot for under an hour, that's the goal. Uh, there's a lot of things to talk about on this fight, and, you know, if you're approaching the boss now, there's gonna be some decisions that you might need to make. If you're approaching the boss in a month, there's also decisions you have to make. So, let's go comp. Now, with the comp, you need to make some decisions based off of P1, P2, and P3. With, well, duh, right? Like, that's the three phases of the fight. But each phase of the fight requires different types of damage to get through the fight efficiently. So, you know, in P1, your Boomkins, your Hunters, your Elemental Shamans are going to absolutely slam that phase. Um, there's other melee classes that do decent cleave, like... Um, we got Paladins and, and uh, Windwalkers and probably Frost DKs. But you need to like consider like you know dealing with the chains in P1 and how much damage you need. And when you get into P2, you know, classes with shorter cooldowns or more bursty cooldowns like your Fire Mage, like your Ret Paladin, like your Hunters again, um, that can just pump a lot of damage into one target while like passively doing decent AoE is going to be like really good and then when you get to the last phase it's all single target and your rogues your demo locks your dk's um they're gonna start pop i mean boomkins as well there they're all gonna start popping off in the last phase and you know there are some really good classes on this fight like armed warriors in general they can do all three phases pretty well um you know Shadow Priest has a niche on this fight, and we're going to talk about all this stuff during the video. And I'm going to pull up our comp, and this is P1, so we'll go to all phases. But this is boss damage. But the you know what you have to decide is where do you need the damage and how your class utility is going to affect the fight and we're going to go over that and why we made these decisions you know I'll, i can break it down now we'll, we'll go over the video that might be a better way of doing it so you know warrior buff if i could have two arms warriors i would um two balanced druids kind of like almost the minimum but the more gear you get they can get away with less but like you also have to consider they're good in every phase and they bring Roar, and Roar is massive on this fight. You know, DKs, they're just, like, overall good. Like, we could have used another Mage, we could have used another Warrior, we could have used basically anything. We took two DKs, an extra AMZ, really tanky, good P3 damage, you know, safe. Another, you know, Demon Hunter, you know, for the buff. Again, two Demon Hunters also very good. Rogues for single target. Ellie Shaman for P1 and P2. Uh, Warlock, we took one. You can definitely get away with two. I don't think they're that good in P1 and P2, but they do pretty well in P3. Again, two hunters for P1 and P2. Mage buff, Fire Mage is like actually pretty good for this fight. We used Arcane for a variety of reasons that I don't think matter that much for this video. But Fire Mage and P2 will just like help carry you during that. And then Shadow Priest, um, they're really good in P2 for one platform, and they do a lot of, they, they mass the spell in P3, which can be very helpful at times. So, you know, I kind of like said, we're just going to take a Shadow Priest. Now, the healer comp, we had two players missing during Prague um, that are usually in, which is another Holy Paladin, and uh, a Rogue. So we used our third Rogue for one spot, and then we used our other shadow priests alt and he's healing um and then we used you know another shadow priest in that spot so that's what we did i you know we were going to take disc double h pal resto shaman but you know resto druid's fine you know like once you get past like the world like top 10 level like as long as you kind of like check the boxes of like you should probably have holy paladin and then you're good <laughs> it's kind of my opinion like even disc you can kind of get like the is a little different because of blood price, be you being up in the air, um, like made spirit shell insane. But now, like you know, holy paladin is just good for like in general. But you can get away with basically anything. So that's the comp. Now, 
I'm gonna go over P1, not this VOD, this VOD. This is not me. Um, and I want to go through P1 and how we did things. So there's a few weak ores you're gonna want. Um, and they're all in Wago probably, but we can go over it. Now, before I talk any further, what we did Sorry, I am pulling up Sylvanas spreadsheet. Here we are. So what I did before we even pulled the boss is I made this. This is out of date. Don't look at this. But this is P1. And I, days before we got to, or even a week before we got to the boss, I did this assignment. I made basically what cop I wanted and, and assigned things. So chain left or, you know, left chains, CDs, right chains, CDs, chains, uh, left chains for second set, CDs, 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 CDs. And then what I do is I would present these to the raid team and the raid team would give me their input. And then I go back and forth. I don't even know if this is final. I'm pretty sure it is, but like in the fight, people make micro adjustments. Um, and then it's the same for P2, which is the chart below, but we'll go over that in P2. So it's important, like, as you can see here, why hunters are so good, right? Because, like, chains left, like, we, we basically just deal with chains almost solo. And, you know, LA shamans are kind of the same way. And, and balanced roots will do first set, but then they'll do intermission. They'll just hard carry intermission. In fact, I can show you that right now. Um, so as you can see, balanced roots are just, like, carrying intermission. And that's kind of like where the idea comes from. Now, going back to the VOD, you know, as an alliance guild, we have dwarf racial, so we're gonna play a different, little different P1 than you, potentially, but, you know, chains one, or yeah, chains one's about to come out. Now, this is a weak aura. It's on Wago, and every guild should set it up. It's gonna tell you what chain to go to to clear your stacks. Now, I believe he dwarf racials, but he is assigned, as you see in the spreadsheet, right. Now, I know this is the right chain because I did prog. And the way we do it is imagine yourself standing in the middle of the room looking out. Whatever's to your right is right, whatever is to your left is left. You always imagine yourself in the middle of the room. If you're at yellow, you imagine yourself in the middle of the room. If you're at blue, you imagine yourself in the middle of the room. Because if you're at blue and you're looking in, right, this is going to be right and this is going to be left. But if you're in the middle, this is going to be left and this is going to be right. So we just determine, like, we're always going to imagine ourselves in the middle of the room no matter what. And, you know, the chains do spawn randomly. So what he's going to do here is he, we've seen this comp, like, this set of chains many times. But he sees this at the corner of his eye and he instantly knows that's probably going to be left. And he's going to go over here. So that's what he does. And he's going to dwarf racial so he doesn't have to clear left. Um, yes, yeah, so, sorry. He looks this way and sees there. But then he knows this is going to be right. And this is a set. And, you know, he's still looking over there, whatever. But that is how we do the chains. Now, because Sylvanas is like, it's almost impossible to move during this phase. Um, Range are going to be baiting away, and you want to bait away for a variety of reasons. So there's an arrow mechanic in this phase. You run out and add spawn. You know, the first arrow, it's tank only, and he throws it between the two sets of chains, and then the adds come in. So, but now we want to bait the boss here so we can do some different things. And this is like what you call the meta strat. So we use a gateway, we get over, we bait veil, and we use a movement speed, every veil movement speed. Which movement speeds are insane. Druids are nuts. Shamans are nuts. We had the luxury of having an Ellie Shaman, a Resto Shaman, two Balanced Druids, and a Guardian Druid. So we are like movement speed galore. So you'll see us use movement speeds in areas where like you might not be able to. But we bait Veil here, use a movement speed. And, and when you're setting up the fight, again, I don't know if this is final because I didn't update it. But like we set up movement speeds for literally everything. Every 
bridge, every veil, and you need to do the same thing. Anyway, the ads go down. And we, you know, we put again, we have an extra wind rush, we use it here, but this is literally just dodging. Now, as you can see here, chains two is going to come out. So instead of being in the middle of the room, he needs to imagine himself in the middle of the room. And what you'll see is the chains will come out and he'll probably do a double check. So, okay, he sees, you know, let's say you're in the middle of the room, which one's left, which one's right, right? So he's going to know. that this one's right, yep. Because he's thinking he's in the middle of the room and that's right. And then we range stack here for Veil. Veil gets baited. We finish the chains. And also, just so you know, like you should know this from Herlock, but your debuff clears if you get chains. So that debuff is telling you which one to get close to so you clear your debuff. Anyway, you see here the arrow mechanics out and we're always just taking it like vertical of the boss. And if you're doing this, you need to pop a personal. Like, you see the shield he has? All right, and we grip him in because he's setting up the ring. So we grip him. He sets up the, the CC and his damage or whatever. But, you know, we bind them. We CC them. If they melee you, there's a weak guard that tells you, like, which one's fixated on you. And if they melee, they melee you, they will take, like, 75 or 80% of your health. Anyway, we continue. Darkness 2 is coming out here. Now we're going to want to bait to purple. And there is a weak aura. Like if you look at my POV, there's a giant weak aura that's like bait to purple here that you can set up if you want. But we bait this. And again, we just want to bait the boss away from the melee and keep her on the edge, which we do. Melee are gatewaying in. And then chain spawn. Again, he's going to make a read. Now he's in the middle of the room. Right, left. He might dwarf racial this, but... I think you should have dwarf racial before. Like, if you're going to dwarf racial, do it before so someone else gets picked, but that's minor. You know? And then we deal with the chains. <clears throat> and one thing to note is you don't want to push her to 84 before the next darkness comes out, or the veil, or whatever you want to call it. So again, these wailing arrows, they're going to run out. And see how this guy is waiting? And these can spawn on, like, they can fixate him. So you have to be careful. Like, if they're fixated on you, you have to CC them. Um, you know, they run out. They run out. They run out. Good. One, two, three. The ads spawn. You CC them. You AOE them. And then we're like, you know, in comms, we're saying slow boss, slow boss, slow boss. And we called it, like, even when the chains come out, eventually we're, like, just chilling boss. And we're going to kill the ads. And we want to push the boss right after this cast. So we're going to whittle the boss down which we do perfectly. And there's a weak gore that'd be like check HP. He doesn't have it, but you can get that off Wago. So we get Veil, we move out. And then we face. So we stack up at orange and you drop AMZs and Link and whatever, like your healing ramp. And by the way, the reason you want to wait for Veil is not, it's usually because one, you want cooldowns up, but two, you're letting the healers like pre-ramp. So like we got a full healer ramp here. And then if you notice he's turtle because he's pre-immune and pre-immunes are insanely good. And I'm actually gonna swap POVs to show you why. This is my POV. So I'm going to increase the quality. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically pre-immune and I'm going to take a shit one. Now, I'm not saying like people should do this. It's just something I was comfortable doing. Because I'm pre-immuning, I'm taking no damage. Cloak, cloak, turtle, turtle. Block. Bubble. So we basically take no damage. And then what I'm gonna do, so like we're dealing with P1 lag and I know like potentially the, like this could have come out and like one tap me. So I held turtle until I saw I could dodge it. Um, and I'm gonna start hitting the shitty set. So like as soon as everyone else gets here, like the shitty set's at 60% already, but I'm gonna take the bad set with turtle, very minor, you don't have to do it. And 
you know, now this phase is all just about dodging and everyone's going to find an easier way to dodge. Some people think the middle is easier. Some people think the edge is easier. I usually think the edge is a little easier. But all I would really do is like, well, one, you can see them spawning. So like you can see I'm positioning my camera and I kind of already know where I have to go. But I'm always going to stay on the move um, and like away from other people because these pools usually spawn around other people. So you can see I just keep moving forward because I know like there's three people there. Okay, P2. That was P1. Now P2, again, this is something I put out like days before we even pulled the boss the first time and asked for feedback. So what I did, this is like the final iteration of it, but what I did is every platform, straight, right, or platform, you know, they're part of the same set, then platform three, um, left and straight, you know, they're part of the same, and then six. And I split people up based off of like strengths of their classes and things like that. So the idea is you want to burn down the Soul Judge and then the Goliath very quickly so they don't cast multiple of their abilities. It, the in short. And, you know, for us, like, you know, you, you, we can, you can split up your healers and tanks whatever way you want. Just keep it like kind of even. Like, the healing, like, you shouldn't, like, have, like, two disc priests on the same side or, like, two holy paladins. Like, make sure they complement each other. Like, a disc and a rest of druid are going to complement each other. You know, the same here. And, you know, we split up the single target a little. And then, like, the goal is, like, you need to have CDs assigned. Now, our rule was at least three CDs per side. And which we do, DK, Hunter, Warlock. Mage. Shadow Priest, Hunter, DK. This side was a little harder, um, so we added an extra set. And you'll be able to just find that out for your own. You'll make adap adapts. Or you'll make the um, changes uh, needed to hit the checks. And then, you know, Platform 3, you'll use your 4-minute users and probably your pure single target people, except for the warrior we used here. But anyway, this is another reason why DKs are pretty good, right? But if you had a Fire Mage... Right, like fire mages could combust, combust, and just delete one of these. It's actually crazy. Um, so it's just something to, to note. Um, now, I'm going to show you straight platform first, because that's what I'm on, and then I'm going to switch to the other platform, and then we're going to do the group together. So I soul shape everyone, and I mess up this pool. So, you know, if you soul shape before this lip, you'll just face plant and the lip so usually what i wanted to do is break the lip and soul shape but as you can see i soul shape i get stuck and then i have to dodge all this stuff but you know what i'm going to do here is the range usually chill back here and we'll dodge veil you want a neutral zone in the middle here so that you can people can dodge veil into but you know because we have a decent amount of range what i'm going to do is i'm just going to step in the melee and get behind and I'm watching this because I know I'm going to be in range of my healer. And I'm just giving the other range a little more room. Obviously, if we're all stacked here, it's going to be a problem, but one person isn't. Um, and again, we're nuking down the Soul Judge and then the Goliath. Now, I'm starting to put damage on the Goliath here because I, I know we're going to beat it and it's not going to matter that much. Um, and eventually, you'll just kind of learn when you can swap and when you don't have to swap. Um, also, getting hit by Wave here is very bad. So we go over. And then we're on platform three. Go into the other POV. <laughs> it's going to be like this a while. So, you know, he's going to be going right. And this is a whole different group. Now, he's going to be cool downing as well. Um, and, again, the wave's going to be a little different. But... You know, their job, let's see what they have to target down. They have to target down the um, Summoner and then the Goliath. But again, you'll figure out, like, you know, how... Like, he's hitting the Goliath now, which is fine, because they've just kind of figured out, like, how they can balance it out and beat it. Now, this side has orbs, and these orbs will, like, absolutely combo you out. I think he dies on this pull, actually. So, like, he's 70%, and these are going to double tick 
and then he dies to something maybe the curse as well so like a lot of our deaths were to that like double to orb curse or something like that dead so like he should have like helped himself there with exhilaration to get up to 100 but like when you're sitting at 70 percent health it's like kind of hard to make that judgment call and one thing to note is and that was like very unlucky too you know they're all chilling in melee which is another way of doing it you know and then they'll get veils and they'll leave so that's like you can either all get in melee or make two groups and you could like see like the other side like some people were in range but like i was also in melee um anyway as you can see here we the other side used the movement speed too but we always use movement speeds to get over these bridges always and you'll see it go down roar go and we'll go back to the other pov Now here, you know, if you don't have a focus macro gateway and you're doing mythic rating, you're just like, <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta change because you'll see why. So focus the gateway and what we're gonna do is we, I know wave is coming. So I'm positioning myself back and then again, he's, she's gonna shoot three waves and then do a veil. So I'm gonna move in and then I'm gonna focus the gateway once you see four. So it's one, two, three, four, take. One, two, three, four, take. We take, we're safe, we're good to go, we're good to rock, and then we damage. And a lot of guilds, like, either you take early, take when they see one, don't focus gateway for some reason, like, and then they're kinda of click it, and then they get, die. Like, if you get take Veil in this phase, it's really bad. Anyway, we're done here. I'm squeaking out any damage I can. People are pre-running, so what we ended up doing is we had our Breast of Shaman and our Arcane Mage pre-run so they could set up on the next platform. Um, I don't have cooldowns on the next platform, so I am not like pre-running super hard. These waves will actually run out of steam about here. And we're gonna talk about the straight group first. We'll watch both POVs of the straight group because we do different things. So initially, we would all try the position on left and then dodge veils right for range in a line because we get curses. Now, I made the judgment, maybe like 70 pulls in, to change that. And what you can see here is I'm in melee. And that's not bad. Um, one, I can get this interrupt on the orb. The terror orb, we wiped that like four or five times. You have to interrupt that and that's a wipe. And it gives the other range more room because then, then I don't exist there. Um, and, you know, what we're using on this platform is Stormkeeper... This is outdated by a tiny bit, but it would be CDs. And then you would use these two cooldowns. And the idea is you want to stack, you know, as many people on the side as possible because it's the hardest part of the whole fight. Um, in, at least in this phase, maybe not the fight. Like you see a hard we're getting hit, like you need healer cooldowns, you need to live this. And we're using, you know, you go summoner, then soul judge. Now, if that summoner gets two orb casts off, you're kind of, like, putting yourself in a really bad spot. So, we nuke the summoner really hard. Um, again, like, eventually you'll learn, like, how much damage you do you actually need on it. But, like, arcane mage was assigned to nuke it. And a lot of guilds will do other things. Um, So maybe, you know, he's hitting it harder. So maybe this was like a bad pull on him. But, you know, we're all trying to kill this summoner ASAP because we don't want two orbs to spawn. Um, I mean, he's still doing a lot of damage. But again, that's the idea. Um, and, you know, we clean everything up. Once you get the summoner down, it kind of gets like more controllable. Um and that's it. Now, this is the hardest part of P2 by a lot. Like, do not sleep on this. Micromanage your positioning. Look at other guilds' logs. Figure out where... Almost basically tell people where to stand. Um, you know, that's a mistake we made. I didn't... It, going back on it, I would have been like, you're going to take this spot, you're going to take this spot, you're going to take this spot, you're going to take this spot. We kind of just figured it out, and I think we lost, like, four or five pulls because of it. Um, now, going to the other POV, he's in what the range POV you know is and i'm gonna skip ahead so he's going over
And again, the range are mostly on the left. And when Veil comes out, they're going to move right. So they go left. And then you can't stack each other with Curse. And then they go right. So like if I was there, it could have been like kind of more hell. Like what happens if I like spawn one here? Um, so anyway, once you get past this, once you, that summoner dies, it gets a little easier. And then you're good to go. Now, left. Now, left is easy, and what we did is, I guess, what quote-unquote meta is. Um, but we're going to send over a ragtag team of a tank, two boomkins that are, you, you know what? Instead of me telling you, I will show you. Oh, what's it called? Goliath. No, Colossus. As you can see, let me just get a little bigger snapshot, a better snapshot of what's actually happening. You know, we're going to use double Boomkin cooldowns, Shadow Priest cooldowns. Um, this is no cooldowns. And he's just here to like kind of like tap on a little more damage and to like lessen the amount of people on the other side as you see how tight it was for the range positioning. It's like we know the warlock, the demo warlock, isn't gonna do a lot of like damage at this point. So like we just threw him over on the other side. And he didn't. I mean he had no cooldowns, he did his job, he did hundred K and we're good to go. So you know, this this Colossus doesn't do much, but and we also sent the disc priest over here. So the frontal, and then some stacks, a barrier, and then we're gonna AMZ after and run VE. So veils come out, you know, AMZ, good. And that's basically the side. Like it's literally just like soak these things and kill them with cooldowns. It's much easier. So they do, and that's it. That side is very basic. But again, we ran things like VE, AMZ, uh, Barrier. And the VE is also like really, really good there as well. You know, because the Shadow Priest is using cooldowns and he's, you know, healing all those people around him. And this side shouldn't really wipe you like at all. Um, so anyway, we're going to go over. And this is the last burn. Now, initially burned at like 80.4, which is like really good with our gear. Um, and we're second potting on here if you have cooldowns. So, so you second pot when it's good for you on the boss. So we sec I second pot here. And again, we're going to focus the gateway. The gateway. And we're just nuking the boss. So now you can see like shrouds coming out. So I know that I'm going to be like, we won't be able to hit her anymore. And we're going to just turn around and we're going to get CCs. So she's shrouded. 76.9 is pretty nuts at our gear. Um, we're dodging waves. I think I get hit. I get clipped by that, but it's okay. And then we're just CCing. Some classes want to build resources and you'll see why. So I mess up here um, and I want to use my POV because I know I mess up. So in an ideal world, I aim shot one of these and get a proc to like use on the boss. But you can get one GCD in on the boss here um, as soon as you transfer. So we do get our GCD and it takes her down point one. And then we start P3. So... Again, P2 is a little complex. Um, you just need to, I'm going to open this up again when I'm pulling up my next stuff. But you need to basically have an idea of where people are going, how they're going to handle it, what CDs they're doing. And as the raid lead, you're going to want to, you know, do that and not... <laughs> How do I put this? You're gonna want to tell people, you know, advise people what you wanna do and get their feedback. But you can get another idea from what people do from other guilds logs. 
Another thing to note is this is a demon hunter. So if you're ever doing prog, if you're ever doing prog and like you're late, right? Like we're late on this side and they're also late. Once both ads are down, like, and they're just building the bridge, you can get over using this technique and interrupter and it will save you the pull. So like now the bridges are down and we're all running over, but you know, we'll watch that one more time. So again, Goliath goes down. He, you know, with he waiting, good. Dash, interrupt. That saved us a few times. Just something small that people don't know about. Um, so let's talk P3. Now, this is positioning for Veil. It isn't a perfect um, drawing because, you know, slight variances. And these are like our soak positions, which we'll talk about later. But, you know, I basically think it's required if you want to kill this boss with like, you know, at a Hall of Fame level and a Hall of Fame alliance, like top 100 US, let's say, that you're going to need assignments. So you know, we have assignments for everyone in the raid, where they go for Veil and where they stand. Some guilds use the DH, jump off, try to put the Veil out and jump back in. We just said, you know what, where our positioning's good and we're just going to have them stay in because whatever. But every guild can do it different however they want. And this will also not be perfect because tanks will be dropping shit around the room. So... You know, going to... Again, this is, this is a weak word from P1, but it's showing up here for whatever reason. Again, as you can see here, I'm in my spot because I know Veil's coming, so I'm pre-positioned for Veil. And... One thing we do is we send our Resto Druid over to pick up stacks. And a lot of guilds will send over a healer to do that. And I'm going to pull up our replay and show you. Bear with me. So what you're going to see here is how we handle P3. Again. Everyone's going to pre position for Veil. And what you can see is our is our monk is going over and picking up stuff. And this is one of the reasons why I picked his, one of his POEs to show. Oops, too far. So you'll see the monk go. And he's trying to pick up pools that are further ahead because... We want to drop as many pulls on the other platforms as possible. Now, it depends on what tank you're playing and how comfortable you are carrying stacks. But he's going to grab a few. And then, you know, we're going to clear up the platform here. So we know Banshee's Fury is coming up, so he's getting dispelled. But our Resto Druid, which I don't have a POV for, is going to also do this. But on another platform. So he jumps over. And he's going to pick up on this platform and then jump back and drop and i'm in like a paladin can do this or something right so they're both coming over and they're both getting dispelled now he's gonna be taking a lot of damage he's not a tank it's something to worry about like he's probably like barked and like calling for potential externals so you know here in the video they should be dropping which they did there's the rest of druids and there's the tanks and for every banshee's fury we're gonna stack under the boss so we did veil banshees stack drop and notice how we're positioned like this because we don't want anyone to get a stack. If someone gets a stack, it's basically GG's. So we do Banshee's Fury, and then Raze comes out, and then every single Raze, we have our Shadow Priest Dispel just in case anyone picked up a stack. He didn't do it on the first one because there's not many, but he will for the rest. Now, arrows are gonna come out, and good, I get the arrow. This arrow is kind of tricky. So, you know, the first two are done Heroic Cell, and the third one has to be different. Now, I'm going to take the inside and he's going to take the outside. So the outside is going to reduce the damage on the raid. The inside is going to get me the third one. So I'm going to go and I take the hit from his arrow. Go. Exil, Hellstone. I think I didn't have to health pot. But what I'm doing is I'm waiting because the reason you want to do this, I don't know if I'm going to actually catch on my VOD. You see the very tail end of it. But there is soaks on this platform. And if the soaks go off on a platform that you're on and you're not soaked on, you'll just die. So what we do 
is I take the inside path and I'm waiting until the soaks go off. And I, I know I see them off the corner of my screen because that's how I, re what, how I reacted to it. And now I know I'm safe. I hop over and I know Banshee Scream's coming out. So I ask for this corner and he's going to adjust. So I told my, the, the disc priest, Can, I'm going to take this corner from you because I just got back. And, you know, it's important to tell your raid that like that third guy has to go to that third platform, pop a personal and, you know, make sure they wait for the explosions on platform three to go off. Anyway, we have veils. And again, like I know I'm assigned over here, but I'm saying like, let, let me just have this corner. And we have Banshee's Fury coming up, so we're going to stack. And, like, I don't want to talk too much on the tank stuff. Like, I did, I do have an idea on how to do it, but it's, like, for your tanks, I think our tanks did, like, an incredible job on this fight. Like, it, your tanks need to sit in a channel together on whatever voice, you know, server you use and, like, hash out exactly what you're going to do. Because, you know, he's got six stacks, he has ten stacks, and they're waiting for this to cast so the boss doesn't drag away. They're getting dispelled. And we have priority dispels. So, like, one healer will always spell this tank, another healer will always spell this tank, and this healer gets the backup. And we stack in mostly the heal for veils. That's what we do. We dodge the pulls. And death knives are coming up, which is an insanely easy mechanic. So, death knives are coming. Basically, you move out and then you stand still. And then we get more knives. So these knives, oh, let me pull up. Actually, we have a bot of this. And I think he didn't do it properly, which this pull so would be a really good opportunity to show. Oh, man. So this is going to be heroic style, but it's with a twist. Um... Boss is at 65.2. Good. So, this is heroic style. So he's going to jump. He's picking up pulls over there because he's the tank. The other guy's going to jump over, hop back when it's done. And the third guy's going to jump over and hop back when it's done. However, there is a veil. Now, what we decided is that the third person is going to jump back during the veil cast. I don't think veil targets people who are in the dead zone. If I'm wrong and it happens to you, let me know. So what we were trying to do is he was supposed to jump over when veil was being cast. So he doesn't do that. So he should be in the air during that cast. So if veil spawned on him, he would have just died. But we have the person w either wait on the full plat on the other platform at full health, so they get hit veil solo, or try to get in this dead zone when veil is out, so they'll basically heal them. You know, if it does hit you, you're being healed immediately, but it shouldn't spawn on you, because you know the DH jumping off and jumping back on, you're basically avoiding the veil. So if you can get in this dead zone, you should be good to go. And he just waited too long, but it was something we were trying in like our maybe like our last like five pulls of P three. So, anyway, back to the fight. Veil's cast. We stack in for AoE healing, and we get raise. We're going to drop off any remaining pools. Again, look, this, this guy is 14, and he has 16. So they're going to get dispelled. They're running out during the cast. So that boss doesn't move, and we get a mass dispel here just in case anyone picked up. And we're on the hardest platform of the fight. This platform is probably the hardest part of the fight. So... We stack in for Banshee's Fury, you know, as always, and then we're going to get Death Knives immediately. So we can pre-spread for Death Knives and Scream, because we know Scream's coming. And again, Death Knives is just run out and stand still. So these guys can run out, stand still, and everyone else adapts. And then we're going to get Scream, and then we're going to get Soaks. Now, there were Soaks on the other platform, and what we did is we had our double balance Druids get them every single time. They spawn in the same location. It's really easy. One thing to note is if one of these guys gets the arrow, then you need a backup. And just to make sure a range or something is watching the backup. The way the soaks work is 
they're always going to knock you away from the center of the soak. So if this is what the soak is, he should be standing right here. And he's going to get knocked this way. He should be standing here. If you're standing in the back of it or the side of it, you're going to get knocked off. So just a note. Now, Veil's coming, so we're going to stay spread. And we're going to get soaks. Now, this is Veil and soaks. So we need to use knockback immunes during this set. Because let's say I take it and I get knocked back or knocked forward really and I just get veil and veil the whole melee. It's just over. So we use knockback immunes and then we stay in our veil spots. And you want to hold your immune through veil just so you reduce the damage. Again, arrows come out. This is heroic style. So they're doing it heroic style. And again, the tank's tanking grabbing stacks and bringing them over again i'm not going to go over like how they did it you need to your tanks need to sit in a channel and figure that out and we're going to stack it for banshee's fury they're clearing the thing and this is like the part of the fight that's probably the hardest because you need to dispel the tanks or you'll die you know before the cast finishes and then you have soaks instantly and here you know we assigned people that had like really strong drs or like immunities like rogues um, so we're going to death knives and then instantly, so you can see him picking up like stacks, but we get really lucky because they're all in the same corner. They can be like spread anywhere. So like our paladin runs out and immunes, you see our rogues running out there, DK's running out there. Like that's, you know, we assigned like, you know, a handful of people to look at those. Um, because that wipes a ton of guilds a lot of times. And if you get those and like it can spawn in here, right? So like if you're not running like a huge DR or something, you're just going to get destroyed by those pools. So, again, Veil's coming. Again, we need to change our positioning. I could be like a yard back, but it's okay. We get Veil, we stay spread, and we get raised. Now, there's one thing that you probably didn't notice in this video. This DH has 13 stacks. There's no VOD of it, but I'll show you the theory behind it. So, 6, 10, 13. We want to clear that fourth platform as much as possible to make it as easy as possible. And the tanks and the DH worked out the strategy where the DH is going to go over and pick them up. So you see the Guardian Drew going over. He's picking up stacks. And now our DH is going to go over. He's got the arrow right now, but he's going to come back and get healed and probably go back. So he's getting healed. You know... And boss at 56% here, he's going to go over a little before the raise. And he's picking up as many stacks as he feels comfortable with, and then he's going to nether walk. So he goes over, he nether walks, he comes back, and then we stack in for raise, and he gets dispelled. So we need to dispel both tanks, or all, both tanks and the DH, and then we go over, and you'll see that in the VOD. I'll rewind just for consistency purposes. So raise, dispel, 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 mass dispel as well as you saw, and we're good. Now we changed our positioning once, but we decided just, just to stay in this corner the whole time. I know some guilds move corners or some guilds use this corner, it doesn't really matter. Now again, this is where the focus map gateway comes out again. You put this down and you focus this gateway. And you use this gateway to get out and deal with these arrows. Um, again, you know, we're only dealing with eight stacks in one stack here so much less banshee's fury we're stacking in with death knives the tanks are getting dispelled during this and we move in we lost one person but it's okay and now the rest of this fight is kind of a joke um so the tank's just going to repick up the stacks but we're spreading for veil there's new pulls we're going to stay spread for Veil again. I have to, con like, because there's a pull on my spot, we all just have to adjust. And again, when you get Veil, you stand still. Other people need to move out of you. Once Veil happens, we lust, we move in. And we always know a tank is going to get the first arrow. So he's just going to go over and pick up these last two pulls. So now we've, we're about to get every single cooldown in the game. Like, the two minutes are about to come up. I forget this third pot, but it's okay because I'm doing calls. That's my mistake. And we get knives. Oh, let me go back. 
So again, he gets the arrow, he goes over. This guy's, you know, is going to go boom, he goes over. These knives, the only thing is you don't want the knife going through the end of the gateway because we're dealing with these last two. So you can see I like position myself like this. We kind of lose spread for this. I'm standing still. People move away from me. And I also don't want to clip the whole ray with it. So like I'm, I'm making sure my arrows make sense or my lines make sense. And then we're going to dispel both tanks. And that's GG's. After this, we have rays coming in five seconds. Um, a lot of guilds can live through the raise for a while. Um, we could have brought this boss like 42%. We were like hitting it. So we're, we were doing so well, but you literally just drop these last two stacks. The boss will do raise. You pop every defensive and whatever you have, the that you have in the game left. And then you try to just do a little more of the boss. Um, and that's Sylvanas in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to bring over the healing list here. Now, again, this healing list has been changed a million times and I still have potentially like more feedback for it, like post prog, but you know, make sure that you look at other guilds and similar comps that have killed the boss extremely quickly and like, look, why are they using their cooldowns this way? Is this actually efficient? Um, can there be updates? And I, I, I'm leaving this up here because I'm assuming people are going to want to look at this and try to implement and implement it into their own um, play. But, you know, these are our cooldowns. And in the last phase, the tanks are getting slammed. So there's going to be a lot of tank healing. And, you know, players with arrows are going to be getting hit really hard. Uh, veil targets need to be priority healed. Um, in P2... Uh, targets with curse um, need a lot of healing. Um, in P1, targets with high stacks need a lot of healing. But you know, as a healer, you want to see what's dangerous, what actually needs to be healed, like spot healed, and like how your class can affect the fight and like bounce and cooldowns off your fellow healers. Um, other than that, you know. P3 damage does matter, but again, if you just execute the fight properly, like even at our gear level, once we executed it properly, it was like we could have brought it to like 43, 42%. Um, and, you know, this is our P3 Sylvanas damage. And as you can see, like, you know, our assassination rogue is just is destroying Shadow Priest. Or, you know, you got to bring classes that are going to balance this out. You can see the hunters uh, down near the bottom. And that's because they were doing a lot of P1 and P2 work. But now, you know, they're letting the rogue carry them and things like that. So that's all I really have to say about Sylvanas. I'm not sure I'm going to do the first few bosses. They're very easy and the strats have changed a lot since we did them. But hopefully you found these guides relevant. If you have any questions, you can always comment in the YouTube video or find me on Discord or something like that. Um, other than that, I think that's everything. And it was fun for me. And uh, maybe more videos in the future. But peace out.